Vermeer's paintings tend to be fairly small, as you can see here, and this is one of his prime examples, the letter. Now as we look at the piece, the door is giving the viewer a sense of who they are, the sense of being a voyeur looking into a scene. One figure is well dressed. She's probably the lady of the home, the one seated with the loot. The other is a maid delivering a letter. The loot, sorry, there's the letter. Now the loot symbolizes love, meaning that the letter is probably a love letter. The painting of the ship reflects love requited. In other words, love that's there sometimes and not others. The ship is a symbol of this because, of course, that is a trade where someone would be gone for considerable lengths of time, and you're never really sure if they're going to return. Now, this piece and many of Vermeer's pieces, we believe, were painted using a camera obscura. The point of a camera obscura is to set up a very small dark room, and you can kind of see an illustration of it here. You put a hole in one side, and oftentimes you put a lens in there, and it would look like a large magnifying glass lens, for example. You shine it off of a mirror, or have the image shine off of a mirror, and then it is presented upside down on the canvas. Now, I've brought up a camera obscura in the past, for example, with Van Eyck's Giovanni Aronfini. And we believe that this may have been used as early as Giotto and the Italian, early Italian Renaissance. And of course you say, well, why don't we have proof of that? Why don't we see camera obscuras in the estates of these great artists? Well, the truth of the matter is, it's really simple. It's a big curtained off room. You could do it with sticks and curtain it would be a piece of glass in the form of a lens and a mirror. Well, neither of those things would stand out. So it's also going to be something that an artist will tend to hide. You like that idea as an artist of the magic of art, being able to create anything. Now, from the artist's perspective, the use of a camera obscura makes a lot of sense. It means I can lay out my composition, I can lay everything out on the canvas very, very quickly and very accurately. If I can do that, that means that more of my time is spent on the painting, and since I'm being paid more than likely a fixed fee, my hourly rate increases because I'm not spending 50 hours trying to work out the composition, it's all done for me. Back to the painting. The colors are amazingly true to life, and there's a lot of theories about this, but he may have simply focused on color. He may have used a number of other techniques, including, including using a front-sided mirror. Light plays a major role in developing the, the illusion of real space. Now, you'll also notice that when you get outside of the center, the focus is a little bit off. And we see this in a lot of his works. It may have been a result of using the camera obscura. That lens that the light passes through is going to alter the image, primarily from the outside. So the further you get from the center, the more unusual that the image may become, the less focused it will become. But these images may be viewed at a distance or must be viewed at a distance. Otherwise, the effect intended through the use of color is lost. So in Vermeer's paintings, if you get really close, you'll notice he doesn't blend his colors all the time. Oftentimes they're tiny elements of color. They're just barely blended. They tend to blend in the eye as we back off, which is why you need to see them from about six feet away. But this gives us that sense of middle-class life in the Dutch Republic. 